Hello folks, Jason Christman here of JC's Bees. And today I'd like to discuss using an incubator to finish capped queen cells. Um, this is going to be the sixth video to my queen rearing series. And uh, it's kind of interesting. If you have an incubator, you don't have to go buy some expensive incubator to do this. I've just got a cheap little giant incubator from uh, Tractor Supply Company. It's used for chickens, turkeys, poultry. Um, and I removed the egg turner, therefore giving me an empty incubator to put my queen cells in cages. Um, you know, I just started to experiment with the incubator back in April. And uh, it's almost the end of June. And to date, I think I've used it about six or seven times so far already. It's been very, very handy. Um, I like the fact that uh, a queen can emerge. She's in a cage. She cannot destroy the rest of the cells. Um, I like the fact that they emerge in a cage in the incubator. I'm able to uh, inspect each queen and look for visual, maybe, problems, um, like her wings. Maybe she's got one leg on one side or something. You never know. So it's nice to visually inspect them. And at the same time, I like the fact that um, the cell finisher is not used full term. So I'm able to remove the excluder, put it back on the top of the top deep, and let the queen have more room to lay. So I like that. It's pretty handy. And at the same time, um, I feel that I'm more in control because I've got the cells and, you know, it doesn't make it so that I have to run out the day before I make splits, pull the cells to see how many I have so I know how many splits to make. I'm able to go just to the incubator as the queens emerge in the cages, take a count, and then I know how many splits to make. So it's very, very uh, accommodating to the beekeeper, I guess. So today I want to uh, kind of show you how to do this, um, kind of give you the rundown. If you see anything in this procedure that you would have any questions or comments about, please leave them below and uh, I'll try and do my best to answer those. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get in a hive, we're going to move capped queen cells. You only transfer them to the incubator after they've been capped, which is about day 9, 10, somewhere in there. Um, you never want to move them if they're still open because the bees still need to cap them. Once the cells are capped, there's nothing that the bees do for them except for keep them warm. So at that point, they're able to be transferred to the incubator. So we're going to go in now. I've got a, a few cells that I, I got to uh, get moved, and uh, I'd like you to check it out. So follow along, and let me know what you think, folks. Okay, folks, what you're looking at here is some bars I made up specifically for sticking in the incubator. Um, after the cells are capped, um, your best move is if you have an incubator um, to place them in something like this. And then you don't have to worry about one of the queens hatching a little early and destroying the rest of your queen cells. If you do not have an incubator, you're going to want to maybe look at uh, putting each cell in a queen cage and setting up a banking colony. Um, the banking colony um, is a queenless colony and the bees in it will feed the queens after they hatch and as they hatch they'll emerge out or hatch out into their queen cage. But this particular setup here that you're looking at these are called hair roller cages and they're usually and they're made actually for the NICOT system. Here I have a complete kit a, a full uh, cup system you have the actual cage, which flips open on the end. The cage comes off to where you have the little Nicot queen ring cup, which comes out. Then you have the cup holder, the white part here. And, and then you have the holder, which actually nails down to the board, or your uh, top bar. So what I did is I modified my kit a little bit. I used the holder as you can see here on the bottom. I used the hair roller cage as you see. It has a little indentation on the top and it pushes down on there. And I used 
the little Nikot cup holder. I did modify it because I do not use the Nikot cleanering system. I graph by hand. So I use these JZBZ cups. Um, sure, you can take the JZBZ cup and just set it on top. But I didn't like all the movement and side to side is kind of just didn't seem right to me. So since I don't use the Nikot, so since I don't use the Nikot clean rain system, I took these little pieces here and I cut them in half, cutting the end of them off. Now let me show you what that did. By cutting the end off, I now have a place to put the cell and it fits a lot tighter than it does just placing it in the top of the hair roller cage. Um, now I'm able to, you can see that the whole queen cup or the whole queen cell will stick down below the white part so I'll be able to see it and it just snaps on like that. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to go out and remove my queen ring frame. Any cells that are capped today will be placed down in these just like that and then placed in the incubator. So that's what we're going to make our way to do now. When removing your grafting frame to access your cells, always remember do not shake the frame. Instead, lay the frame across the top of the hive and use your smoker and smoke the bees off. If you use enough smoke, it'll force them back down in between the frames and you'll be able to access your queen cells very easily. I'd also like to remind you that during this time, you do not want to procrastinate. You do not want the cells to chill, and uh, you do not want them in direct sunlight. So, be efficient, be quick, be careful. Okay, we'll quickly transfer these over. Putting one cell in each cage. Now if you're going very far from your bee yard back to where your incubator or whatever is and you don't want your cells to chill. They make a little heated cell carrying box that plugs into your cigarette lighter. Or you can do the, the cheap way like I do. Get you a little Coolman uh, Coolmate cooler. Put you, cut your wooden block so that it'll fit to the inside of the cooler. And uh, get you a couple Powerade bottles or something like that and put hot or warm water in them. Place that in the cooler and that is actually very effective at keeping the cells warm. Um, a few years ago I was selling queen cells on Craigslist and that's how I would meet the people. I would make up a cell block like this, throw it in a little cooler, throw some warm water bottles in there and cover it with a towel, close the cooler up, and the cells did very well. That one ain't gonna make it, it got tore open. So now to get these in the incubator, folks. Okay, so here's my little giant incubator. Um, I've got the temperature sitting at about 93 degrees. It's got a reading here. And then I've actually got an oven thermometer with a probe that goes inside the oven. I've got that set at 93 degrees and I've got an alarm set so if it goes to as high as 97 it'll sound. From the research I've done, 93 to 95 degrees is ideal. So I'll open this up, get the cells put in there.
And then we'll get it closed back up. And keep an eye on it over the next few days. Okay folks, I noticed this morning that a few of my queens had started to emerge. And I want to give a quick check and see how many more have emerged since earlier today. Now if you look, this one's got a queen, this one's got a queen emerged, and that's the only two on this stick of cells here. Okay folks, this is the California cage. And what I like about using this versus this for transferring into the queenless colony or split is that this cage will fit easier between two frames than this one will. So for that reason, I'm gonna transfer each queen into one of these cages. Transferring the queen from the hair roller cage to the California cage can be a little bit contrary at first. Um, especially if you don't have any experience handling queens. Um, it makes you a little bit reluctant to touch her. Um, the queen bee, her stinger is not barbed. So the thought is always in the back of your mind where she can sting me repeatedly. Um, I've been handling queen bees for about five years now. And not once have I been stung. Uh, the worst I've had happen is the queen fly out of my hands. In this case, the queen is so young, that's not really a threat. Um, she hasn't developed her flight muscles. Her wings are still kind of weak. So the most she's going to do is walk up your arm. So maybe use that to your advantage if you're a little bit of the shy type. Um, open the bottom of the, of the hair roller cage. Let her walk up your hand or onto your hand, up your arm. And maybe use the California cage and try and corral her into it. Nothing wrong with that. You're still getting the... Uh, the goal achieved. Once the queen is in the California cage, I know in this video it shows that I use a marshmallow to plug the end off. That was my first experience this year. Now I'm just taking the Jay-Z BZ cup and plugging the end off. Um, the marshmallow uh, was not for them to eat away to release the queen. It was just a temporary plug. And I didn't see, I seen that as an added cost and an added resource. I've already got the Jay-Z BZ cup. Might as well just stick it back in the end, plug her off in there. Uh, I like to uh, manually release the queen. So it works for me. Um, if you're the type that doesn't like to manually release the queen, then you're going to want to stick some fondant, maybe a marshmallow or some candy of some sort in the end of the cage. Okay. So what'd you think, folks? Think this is something you'd be uh, interested in trying? I tell you personally, I don't know that I'll ever go back to using the cell finisher to completely finish my cells, just because this is so much more convenient for me. Um, saves me time. Um, like I said, I'm not running out to the hive to open it to see how many cells I have. I could just simply go to the incubator. There's no smoke needed. There's no bee suit, there's no bee tools. You just open the incubator very very easy and like I said you do not have to have a high dollar incubator to do this go to tractor supply and uh, buy one of their cheap chicken incubators that's what I'm using doing a fine job so if you like the video throw me a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments leave them down below if you haven't taken time to subscribe please do so and make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week, folks.